geldiniz öncelikle. Bugünkü seminer konumuz yurt dışında lise eğitimine karar verirken dikkat edilmesi gereken noktalar olacak. Burada katılımcılarımız var, okullarımız var. Okullarımız size kendi ülkelerinden ondan sonrasında işte oradaki international öğrencilerin yaşadıklarından genel olarak ve uluslararası öğrencinin lise eğitimine başlamadan önce, yurt dışında lise eğitimine başlamadan önce dikkat etmesi gereken noktalardan bahsediyor olacaklar. Bütün konuşmacılarımız tabii ki yabancı olduğu için genel akış İngilizce olacak fakat yine bu sunumdan sonra, seminerden sonra eğer ki sorularınız olursa bu konuda, aklınıza takılanlar olursa zaten standlarımızda danışmanlarımıza sorabilirsiniz rahatlıkla. Aynı şekilde ben de zaten standda olacağım, bana da sorabilirsiniz. O zaman şimdi yavaş yavaş başlamak istiyorum. Ben birazcık e, okulları da tanıtayım başlamadan önce. E, Katya Ross bizimle olacak. E, Arda International Boarding School'dan. Orla Bradshaw bizimle olacak. E, IQ Schools Group'tan. E, ondan sonra Monica Health bizimle olacak. Academia High School'dan. E, Jeremy Robbins Brown Preparatory School'dan. Ve Asya Watson's'da e, Kolej Şampitet'ten bizimle beraber olacak. E, welcome guys. Hello. Hello. Hello. Uh, well, Hello. today's topic is things to consider when deciding studying abroad. Uh, I'd like to start with uh, Kathy from Brown Preparatory School. Kathy, what are your thoughts uh, on considering when deciding studying abroad? Sure. So when you're looking abroad, you want to make sure that the program really meets your needs. For example, BREM is a school that helps students with learning disabilities. So make sure that as you're looking, that, sc that school is really going to address the needs that you have. Okay, thank you. So, and also like, what would you recommend to the high school students who is planning uh, a year abroad or like their whole high school education abroad? Sure, again, in addition to that program, look at the area and make sure it's someplace you're going to feel comfortable and that it's easy to get to. Um, my uh, head of school, Jeremy, may have some other thoughts on that. Jeremy? Yes, thank you, Kathy. Uh, we're located, in fact, in the Midwest uh, in the United States, uh, in the state of Illinois, um, closer to Nashville, Tennessee, um, and Memphis than, in fact, Chicago. And one of the most important experiences for our students is the relationships they make with others, the relationships with peers, so friends and fellow students, the relationships with teachers, but also relationships with the families of fellow students, in particular, those who live in the area. Um, so I think that for students looking at studying abroad, um, really understanding what are the lifelong relationships you'd like to form, um, both with people your own age but also um, others. Okay, thank you. Well, actually, I'd like to switch to Turkish here uh, and make a quick explanation. Um, aslında burada gerçekten çok çok önemli bir noktaya değinildi. Şöyle ki önemli olan şey, yani bir, e, yurt dışında bir lise eğitimine karar verirken aslında hani tamamen e, konuma ilk başta bakmamız gerekiyor. Çünkü e, bu konumdaki aslında etrafındaki insanlar, o bölgedeki aileler aslında bizim burada e, temel noktamız olacak. Yani bir okula tercih etmeden önce e, kesinlikle kesinlikle konumuna bakmamız gerekiyor. Uh, thank you Jeremy. Uh, would you like to make any additions like uh, considering like a high school student who is planning to like study abroad, which is like, actually and actually quite a big and important step for those child for those children and their parents. So what else that they need to check if oh, Orla, would you like to say something? Oh, sorry, I, I had to mute myself and then unmute again because I had, had to talk. Okay. <laughs> okay, then. Uh, well, Jeremy, would you like to make any additions like for the students who's uh, planning uh, to study abroad? Like we have said, we are talking about like the relationships that they are going to build, the location of the school, and what else that they need to check before deciding which school that they are going to study. Well, here at Brem Preparatory School, we often use the term healthy risks, meaning that students want to stay safe, but it's important to recognize that you won't have all the information um, about what to expect, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. So, of course, you want to make every preparation and know um, all of the information that you can in advance, but recognize that part of the experience is being in a situation where you won't might you might not know exactly what to say, 
or there'll be an uncomfortable cultural exchange. So to be open to that growth and part of the experience, of course, is growth. And I can speak from my own experience, having studied abroad both in high school and then while you Oh, really? I didn't know that. So uh, could you kind of share your experiences with us? Sure. So I, I grew up in New York, not in New York City, uh, but north of New York City, and attended a boarding school um, in the state of Connecticut, which was a difficult uh, step for me uh, to uh, move away from my own family. Um, I began in my 10th grade sophomore year. Um, and then the next year, I had the opportunity to live in Paris, um, in France, for um, a trimester of my school year. Oh, actually, um, and I can tell you, actually, completely different say, country and complete different language for you. And, and I can say, um, I was somewhat socially isolated um, when I was younger in middle school. Um, I had a difficult time making friends. Um, and the other students who were on that group who went to Paris, those are many of my lifelong mm -hmm. friends. Um, and I came back from that experience um, in many ways a different student. Uh, I was um, glad to see my family. Uh, I was glad to be back uh, in the United States, um, but I also really had experiences that shaped my life um, and, and um, you know, created friends um, that I still connect with today. Wow, actually, that's quite amazing. So probably all of the students who have like one year of all their full education abroad is going to have that same experience. They are going to like face with uh, that feeling of isolated. Uh, they are going to have troubles with making good friends at first, but after that, they are going to be coming back with their uh, home country with like strong relationships and many, many amazing experiences. Yes. Those all are quite valuable. Thank you, Jeremy. So, Monica, uh, well, what are your, your thoughts like uh, on considering when deciding studying abroad, especially when you're a high school student? Yeah, I actually prepared a presentation for you guys. I'm not sure if I can share my screen and just tell uh, a bit step by step uh, what should be considered, what I think is important, and I would share uh, some information about the school if, uh, if that's okay. Yeah, that would be perfect, thank you. All right, so let me share the screen with you. Can you see anything? Mm, no, not right now. Not right now, okay. Mm. All right, now it should work. Yes, perfect. Great. What are the reasons to start? Yeah, I would say that the first question that may appear in uh, students' head is why would I uh, consider going to high school abroad? Uh, so I'm telling you that there are some key reasons uh, which are uh, experience uh, that you can enrich, enrich your resume and um, become more open-minded. Uh, you get a different perspective, so you can see, uh, get a different way of seeing the world. You know, new culture and people from different countries, especially if this is international school, you can um, meet different countries, learn different languages and meet people from all over the world. And you obviously learn uh, responsibility uh, when living on your own. And now let's go to uh, the main question, what to consider when choosing a high school. Um, first of all, you should consider uh, what program you are interested in. Uh, if this is, for example, most popular IB or maybe A-level, which is more popular in Europe, especially UK. Uh, this is actually what our school, Academia High School, um, <laughs> gives you. This is A-level. I would say the main uh, difference is that you get three choices of subjects in A-levels and you get six <laughs> subjects in IB, where three subjects in A-level are your choice and they are usually in one discipline. So uh, you study what you like and what you need to study before going to the university of your choice, right? And 
in IB, uh, you have to do different uh, uh, departments and uh, one, two subjects from each. Uh, both programs are taught in English, which is um, great, especially for when going abroad, right? Because this is English and uh, almost everyone knows it. Um, yeah. And regarding to academic law, uh, load, I would say that it's said here that it's low to high in A-level, so I would say it's high in both, especially if uh, it's a great quality school. Uh, you still need to work hard uh, anywhere you are. And both of these exams, which is a common question appearing uh, pretty often when candidates apply, uh, will A-level be accepted worldwide? Yes, this is internationally recognized exam and you can apply to mm -hmm. any university in the world. Next Actually, to yes, like, uh, sorry to interrupt, but I think one of the most important things for the student to consider is the program because uh, what you all explained in the previous presentation, like this is quite different than the Turkish high school education system. So they need to be prepared that the program structure is going to be quite different than they have had during the years until now. And like they should be prepared for all, for all the differences. Thank you. Yes, that's true. Uh, even in Poland, in uh, public schools, you don't have uh, what A-level or IB um, offer, right? And exactly. uh, you probably will not meet Turkish program somewhere abroad. Uh, that's why I'm telling about those most popular ones in the whole world, right? Thank you. Uh, okay, uh, when you're choosing the school, uh, I think this is pretty important to do some research and um, read read interviews, search Google, uh, if there is any more information about it. But I think that the most reliable one uh, is experience of alumni. So it's worth uh, looking for those people, uh, getting to know them and hear what they have to say about the school they attended, what it gave them, what experience it was. For example, our students uh, call Academia a pre-university university, which means <laughs> that we gave them some experience that prepared them pretty well for studying abroad. Uh, and they also met lots of people from all over the world, which helped them to interact uh, in future education when they went abroad. So here you have some uh, experiences from our uh, alumni. Okay, so before deciding that which school that they're going to study, they really need to check the school's reputation and they need to like contact with the alumni or the current students maybe in order to decide that school is uh, suitable for them or not. Exactly. I, I think this is the, the best choice. And I have to say that 80% uh, of our candidates are from uh, know about us from their friends who uh, were learning at our school. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, right now, I think it's pretty uh, important to check health and safety measures. Uh, Most important for topic for the last year. <laughs> I know, uh, this is our reality right now, uh, so you should check if uh, there is online learning or not, if there is a hybrid learning maybe, uh, which is what we do now. Uh, we do COVID tests uh, every week for all students, teachers and staff. We have temperature measure at the entrance and masks available for everyone. Obviously, hand sanitizers and all that stuff. And I need to say that I was amazed with the uh, reactions of our headmaster when uh, COVID appeared in Europe. Uh, that was very fast and we switched to online learning and admissions processes uh, just within hours, actually. That was crazy time, but uh, we did it and we're doing great. So uh, I think you should check that just, just in case. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you are you are a hundred percent right. Like before deciding which school to study, like in the COVID nineteen times, like all the students should check uh, what kind of um, 
uh, what kind of actual like important updates that they do in the school to support their students uh, about online education or hybrid education or like what they are doing uh, to keep the distance. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and then um, I thought that uh, I could mention about uh, what else except academic offer does the school have for you? Uh, I mean, this is academic as well, but uh, recently it's not only uh, A-stars that you offer for colleges when presenting your uh, yourself as a great candidate, but what what else you have to, to offer? What else you have done during the, those four or two years, uh, depending on what, what entry point you will pick? Uh, so building your portfolio and doing something more like internships is pretty important. And this is, for example, in our case, PDS department, which is personal scheme. Or um, we, we have career advisors who help students make great choices uh, that we, we organize different meetings with admissions from universities all over the world uh, who tell about their colleges, the admission processes, requirements and everything. So uh, students can ask questions, they, they are well informed and they always make great choices. Uh, and we have career advisors for Europe and UK I mean, UK is in Europe, but um, it's the main choice, I would say, for students so far. And the separates uh, are for Canada and the USA. Well, actually, most of the students who choose to start their high school abroad, they wish to continue their education abroad as well, like in USA, in Canada or UK or in Europe. So actually, it is, uh, I think, very important for a high school to have a careers advisor who is going to uh, support them with their university applications and decide which university or which department is going to be the best fit for the students. I actually have one question, one question about that. Like, let's say a student wants to study architecture in the university. Do you also support for the do you also support the students to create a portfolio as well? Yes, we have very uh, well-developed artistic department with uh, special studios for them and special equipment. Uh, when, whenever you apply to Academia and you uh, are coming to that step of choosing your A-levels, uh, you may decide to choose history of art, uh, 3D design, uh, just art, photography, whatever you wish. And definitely uh, there are teachers who are well educated in that area uh, and they help students build their portfolio and prepare works for their exams. For example, when we have a great uh, big garden, there are some uh, sculptures that our students prepared for uh, universities applications. There are uh, photography uh, exposures on the walls around the school. So yes, uh, we have both academic and artistic pathways at our school. Oh, perfect. Actually, like I have another question popped up in my mind about this. Like I know that it is really hard to get an acceptance uh, from a university uh, in medicine course, um, and also like there are many tests that the students needs needs to take uh, in before uh, submitting their applications, such as like UKK, BMAT, etc. Um, so, do you also um, like support your students uh, to take the tests or prepare for their exams? Yes, we do prepare for uh, for all of those exams and we uh, provide BMAT exams at our school. Uh, regarding SAT, we do prepare for that uh, and we do that through our electives, which are uh, not obligatory afternoon uh, classes that students who are interested in, in applying to USA uh, take and we teach how to pass it. <laughs> Okay, perfect, perfect. So good to hear that, thank you. Yeah, so uh, now just in short, um, I know that lots of people are interested in fees and uh, scholarship opportunities. I need to say that a good school abroad with uh, international program will never be cheap. 
uh, you pay for high quality of education and that's obvious it will never be cheap but uh, we offer scholarship uh, programs and these are uh, both artistic and academic pathways here so you can apply for uh, either this one or that one uh, and we do that once a year the application process starts usually in the beginning of January and ends uh, by the end of February for example today is the last day to apply for scholarship at Academia and you may apply for up to 100% for uh, tuition for boarding and for lunches, which I think is amazing opportunity, especially in such school. Uh, so yeah, regarding boarding, we are a boarding house offering um, living in uh, um, a building with other international students and having a guardian. Uh, there are two separate wings for boys and for girls, single rooms with bathrooms, one social room and so on. So uh, the thing, if this is a boarding house, is must uh, is one is one of the major uh, aspects I would say when you are going abroad. So please make sure that uh, a school offers something like that. Otherwise, you will have to live on your own or take a parent with you, probably, especially if you are under eighteen, right? Uh, the other thing that you might be interested in are prep courses for such schools, so you know teachers, other students, and requirements during such courses. Uh, I think summer schools are pretty interesting experience and a kind of um, trial for you, so, so mm -hmm. you can be treated as a sample for a few days and see how we teach uh, and what you can expect when you come to us. Mm -hmm. uh, and very important thing uh, for internationals is to check if school supports visa uh, application, if there is a local mentor uh, when you come here, if somebody will take care of you, and if there is a well-being department that takes care of your um, inside, let's say, because uh, living abroad for young people might be uh, hard sometimes, and such mm -hmm will happen uh, so you would need to have some help obviously okay thanks a lot yeah that's it what i had to, uh, to say thank you thanks a lot um and thank you for this amazing presentation uh and actually we can continue with asya asya i think you have also a presentation right yes yeah just one second um uh... Okay. Um, can you see my screen or? Not yet. Okay, sorry. What about now? Yes. Right now we can see your screen. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, so hello everyone. My name is Asia. Um, we are a Swiss boarding school uh, for students from 11 to 18 years old. I think um, the, the presentation of Monica was very full and a lot of things uh, which are very relevant have been mentioned. So I just want to add a few other extra things. Um, so of course, uh, it's very important that your students find something for him or herself, that he likes the place, he likes the school, that there are activities available, the diploma programs available, but also many of the students, they choose uh, the right boarding school because they then want to enter the best university in the world. And um, actually today I went on Harvard's uh, webpage and read a little bit what they are looking for there right candidates and i think a lot of top universities they have similar criteria um so a lot of universities they want to see growth and potential in their candidates so i think when you're uh, looking for the right school you need to see that the school can support you with constantly learning something new that you can be a great student and get good academic results but also help you to stay motivated and be hard working towards your goals and this is what a lot of universities want to see in their candidates afterwards. They also want to make sure that the students are 
having a lot of interest and they have been doing a lot of activities. So I think um, when you're selecting a boarding school, it's good to look um, at the activities available, what you can do there, that you can continue with your hobbies, that you can constantly learn something new and um, constantly continue with your growth. And of course, a lot of universities are also looking into the personal character. Um, what choices have they made and why, how open the student is to new ideas and people, um, how mature they are, have they done any leadership uh, skills, any courses uh, about the energy overall. And I think these are the questions also the parents and the students have to ask to the school they are applying for boarding at the beginning. And also very important these days is contribution to the community. So it's important that the student is not only caring about themselves, but also thinking about how they can help and care about people around them and that can contribute to the community. So I think uh, when you are selecting the school, um, it's important to look at the diploma program available. Can you then go with this diploma program to the university of your dreams? Um, at Champiter, for example, we offer free diploma programs, and one of them is IB. So Monica also covered a little bit about IB program. So it's now um, recognized worldwide. And of course, um, I, I actually personally started in the UK. So I was raised in Lithuania. And then when I was 17, I moved to the UK and started there for some time before I moved to Switzerland. So I remember I was also looking into the academic results. What is the pass rate? because um, it, it a little bit reassures you that you can also get good results. Of course, even if you select the best school, but you don't do anything there, it doesn't mean that you will get the best academic results as well. You need to understand that you will have to work hard. But for example, at Champite, we have 100% pass rate and our average IB result is 35. So it's something what shows to the families that we have good records, good history. And I would recommend families to look into that as well. Also, location is very important. If you are the student who really likes sports, likes to be outdoors, uh, I would recommend looking into the sport fields which are there. Also, if you like to be in the community and sometimes go to the town, it's important to look into this aspect. If you're very cultural, it's important to know that there are museums and galleries in the area. And of course, um, if the family has a choice, to firstly travel and visit the schools before applying to it is always the best. And I guess now with COVID, a lot of schools are doing uh, virtual tours. Um, so we actually have a virtual tool on our website where you can go and actually visit um, the whole school, the area, see the rooms, see the classrooms, which is very helpful as well. And um, as I was mentioning, a lot of universities want students to have a lot of interest, do a lot of activities. So a very common question from the families who apply to our boarding school is, what are the after school activities um, available? Can, can the student continue with the hobbies? Can they try something new? So we try to offer not just sports, but also programming and coding, some yoga, some dance, some art classes, so that the student can always try and learn something new. And extra projects at school are also very important. For example, charity work or community work. At Champite, we have our own foundation. So we support the students in Cambodia, Madagascar, uh, Thailand, and Switzerland. And while students are doing the academic program, they also can travel to all these locations and support the kids who are in need. And of course, they're doing it not only just because it looks good on their resume when they're applying to universities, but just because they actually do want to help and it makes them more respectful and kind humans. Um, I would say um, it's also very important to look at their nationality mix, um, that there are students from different countries that you can make friends from different <laughs> countries. And at Champite, for example, we have different 50 nationalities. Um, living conditions because the boarding school is your new home. So I guess um, if you have certain criteria about the room, the facilities, how it will all be, ask these questions, ask to send photos, or as I said, a lot of schools are now doing virtual tours so you can actually see everything online. And um, also I think it's important if you're selecting a new country to think well, what else 
you could get from going to this country? What are other benefits? Um, for example, if you come to Switzerland and complete a, a school here and then uh, learn one of the national languages, which is either French, Italian or German, we are located in the French part of Switzerland. So all our kids, they learn in the second language, which is always great. And with knowing the national language, you can get to the public universities. Um, and in Switzerland, public universities, they are recognized worldwide, but also they're almost free of charge. So in a way, it's a great investment for families. Um, they have selected a, a good boarding school and afterwards they entered a good university. And then Switzerland is known for a very stable economy. So there are a lot of great jobs, very well paid. And I think coming for a boarding school and then being able to stay in Switzerland is also very attractive to families. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Asya, for this presentation and covering like the most important things to while considering studying abroad. Orla, uh, well, what are your thoughts on considering um, when deciding studying abroad? So I, I think everybody's covered probably the most important areas on what to consider when studying abroad. First thing I always say to international students when they are looking at coming abroad, um, so I represent the UK, um, and I always say, why? Why would you like to study abroad? I think it's important for the students to really understand what they want to gain from the experience. You know, is it to improve their language skills? Is it for a particular course? Is it to have an advantage in gaining access to the British university system? And then once they've established what the real reason is as to why they'd like to study abroad, they can then start looking into other areas. Um, I think the education systems are very important to understand, as we touched on earlier. You know, the UK education system is renowned worldwide. It's it's the top un, um, education system currently, followed by USA and Australia. And I think that's one of the, the key areas that you need to focus on. But you need to understand these education systems to see if it will suit your learning as well. I think it's location is one of the key things. Um, as always, you know, it's important to consider countries as a whole and not just the major cities. The gem of the school that you may want to attend may be hidden in a really small town or village somewhere that isn't a major city and you might achieve so much from that institution, but because you've not considered the whole country, you might miss this institution. Um, so I think it's really important to consider a country as a whole and really look into the areas, really consider what sort of area do you like? Do you want a city landscape or do you want the mountain sea? Do you want a mixture of everything where you have that possibility to be able to go and travel around the country whilst you're there? Um, when you've finally pinpointed where you would like to study, I think it's really important to look at academic achievements that the school has, awards that the schools maybe have received in the past. Also to see what support that you'll receive as an international international student, whether that be EAL support, pastoral support, or just cultural awareness workshops. Obviously, when you arrive in a country, it may be very culturally different and it may be quite difficult to settle in. I think it's always important to remember that all international students are in the exact same boat. So it is so easy to make friends when you do arrive at these institutions because you're all having the same situation. And it's it's great to experience, share your cultures and just start this new chapter in your life. Like Jeremy, I also studied abroad um, when I was growing up. I studied in Portugal and it was an amazing experience. I grew in confidence and I had a whole new opportunity to life. When I came back to the UK, it was different and I, I almost was a new person um, because I'd learned so many different skills, gained so much confidence. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, it was just a great opportunity. When you're looking at these institutions, I think it's important to consider the facilities that are available at the school because you might be there for a particular sport, a particular course. You know, in the UK, there might be a sport that we offer that you've never practiced before or played before. You might want to try something new. So it's great to really consider the facilities. Each institution are going to have their own unique facilities. Middleton College, we've got a rock climbing wall. We really excel in outdoor learning. This is something that a city school might not have. 
And right. so, like I said, really important to consider all options when looking abroad. Going back to the academic achievements, it's really important to know that you're going to receive the right amount of support with your UCAS applications. As we've already mentioned, getting into university is quite challenging. It's not exactly the most straightforward process. And it's really important that you have those experts there guiding you through the whole experience from selecting your A-level options or your IB subjects to make sure you're meeting that entry requirement for those universities. But then to also make sure you're gaining the right experience to make sure that personal statement is really shining through and putting you above all other students. You want to make sure you're being guided through the interview process and you're guided through the assessment. So really look into what support you will receive. Ask the questions. You're not going to find out maybe by just looking at the website. It's important to get in contact with all these people and really see what they can do that's different to each institution and how it suits your requirements. You really need to make your experience personal to yourself because no two students are going to have the same journey the whole way through. It's going to be completely different. You all have different wishes. You all have different ambitions and desires. So it's important to really focus on yourself and go the right journey for yourself. Extracurricular activities are such an important part of the British education system because we like all students to arrive at university as a whole student. Universities don't just like the academics, they like to see that you've gone above and beyond and you've tried different sports, you've been part of the school community, you've enjoyed the debating society, the science club, the art club, um, taken part in school productions. So it's important to look at the extracurricular activities and see if there's activities that are suited to you as well um, and see what different opportunities that you can have. So like I said, I just think it's really important to consider why you want to study abroad and what you want to achieve from the experience and gain from this experience. And then there you can go on and look into the other options that we've all talked about and go into more detail of location, facilities, academics, subject courses, and hopefully then you'll be able to select the right option for yourself. Thank you, Arla. Uh, actually, like, uh, as you can imagine, like as everyone can imagine, Oxford and Cambridge are quite popular in Turkey um, for students. But it is kind of impossible to get an offer letter uh, when you are graduated from a Turkish Turk high school. So that's why actually uh, they go to the UK um, to like, to study A levels. So, how do you support your students to get an offer letter from universities such as Oxford or Cambridge? So, we actually have um, a Oxbridge alumnus at one of our schools. Um, she used to teach um, and did her research at Oxford University. So she's very experienced and very knowledgeable on the application process, and that is something that is brilliant and invaluable. Um, you know, it's amazing that we have her there at the school to support our students, but she really understands the different areas of the application process. As we all know, it's a very thorough application process and you have so many different stages from submitting your application to then being invited for an interview and the assessments. It's important to understand that you know all areas that are going to be covered. So our experts at the school will guide the student the whole way through preparing them for the interview. They'll do mock interviews. They'll be doing mock tests throughout, guiding them on how to answer these questions because there's a specific way of answering these questions and you have to do it in a specific time. Um, so it's really important that practice is put in place. And this is the thing, it's important that you've got the team there to ensure that you are getting the correct support and the dedicated support to each application. Like I said, every student is completely different and with all the different courses, it's going to be completely different as well. Um, so it's important that you have that individual guidance the whole way through. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. So like to wrap it up, like we have uh, talked about like the location, like which is the first thing that they need to check before deciding that they're going to study at that particular course and like the nationality mix that we said, this is also quite important. And also like the diploma program that they're going to be involved, which is also quite important if they're going to study IB or A-levels. And also like the projects, 
uh, and extracurricular activities that they are going to do. Um, so, do you um, guys want to add something more, like anything else that comes to your mind about uh, considering while deciding studying abroad? Okay, <laughs> I think like, we have covered everything up. So I would like to make a final Turkish explanation about everything as well. Uh, şimdi aslında ben burada konuştuklarımızı çok kısa şöyle bir Türkçe'de özetlemek istiyorum e, dinleyen öğrencilerimiz için. Şimdi birinci olarak kesinlikle konum kısmına çok fazla dikkat etmemiz gerekiyor. Önemli olan şey nerede okumak istiyorsunuz? Yani şehir insanı mısınız yoksa biraz daha hani küçük bir şehir olsun mu istersiniz? Yoksa büyük şehirde e, işte hani bir binada e, okumak mı istersiniz? Hani şehrin bütün imkanlarına yakın olmak mı? Yoksa hani dev bir kampüste biraz daha hani büyük şehirde uzak bir yerde okumak istersiniz? Bu kısım çok önemli. Ondan sonrasında okulun e, çeşitliliği, millet çeşitliliği çok önemli. Sizin gibi kaç tane kaç uluslar international öğrenci olacak. Bu kısım çok çok önemli. Extracurricular activities dediğimiz yani ders dışında e, sizin yapacağınız şeyler işte yüzme olur, yoga olur, müzik, sanat gibi. Hani okul size ne sunuyor? Çünkü bazı okullar spor alanında çok çok iyidir, bazı okullar sanat alanında çok çok iyidir. Hani hangisi sizin ilginiz daha çok çekiyor? Aslında birazcık Bunları kontrol etmeniz gerekiyor, bakmanız gerekiyor. Diplom program dedik ki ne mi okuyacaksınız, ailem mi okuyacaksınız? Hepsi uluslararası anlamda tanınmış. Fakat hani hangisi daha çok ilginizi çekiyor? Hani Monika zaten bu minik farklılıkları ay bir eylül arasında sunumunda göstermişti. Ondan sonrasında bir onlara bakmanız gerekiyor. Projeler ne tarz projeler yapıyor olacaksınız? Bu kısım çok çok önemli. Onun dışında hani herhangi bir sorunu olursa zaten burada katılmış olan bütün okullarımızı masada bulabilirsiniz, sorular sorabilirsiniz. Soruları görüyorum fakat e, bu soruları masalarda direkt olarak e, katılımlarınıza sormanız daha mantıklı olacaktır. Çünkü şu anda konumuzdan birazcık farklı. Zaten masadaki danışmanlarımız ve okul temsilcilerimiz en iyi şekilde e, sizi yönlendireceklerdir diye düşünüyorum. Thank you guys for listening to me even it's in Turkish. <gülüyor> so I just wanted to like um, tell the students like everything in like three minutes in Turkish. Thanks a lot for your presentation. Thanks a lot for sharing uh, your thoughts with us today.